Yo, what is going on, guys? Today, or should I say tonight, wherever it is around the world, you're watching this video. Um, we're actually gonna. I'm gonna show you how to overclock your GPU. Now, I just want to do pretty much a disclosure for this: is that if you're watching this video and you're planning to overclock your own GPU, please take this at your own risk. I am not liable for your GPUs frying on you, or getting destroyed. This takes a lot of practice, uh, and if you're if this is your first time doing it, I recommend doing it in small, very small increments. Uh, I already have stress tested this GPU to the point where I already know where the sweet spot is. You do notice when you hit the limit of a GPU, it's not like a CPU, you actually will start seeing your computer acting weird, you'll start seeing artifacts, you start seeing it freeze, it'll, it'll restart on you, stuff like that. But I'll talk about all that throughout this video. So let's let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, we're gonna go to the main main camera. And the program that I use is called MSI Afterburner. Uh, so this is one that you could actually download. It's free of charge. Just because it's made by MSI doesn't mean you have to get a GPU by MSI. Uh, EVGA cards with, work with it as well. Asus, all brands do. Uh, they do offer another one called the EVGA Precision Tool, which is pretty much the same thing. I personally prefer MSI Afterburner, so I stick with MSI Afterburner. But once you install it, you can just Google it. MSI Afterburner comes right up. Uh, once you install it, there's a few things that I like to change though in, in the actual software. So if you click on the little uh, setting wheel, uh, the first thing I do is go to, to monitoring, the tab up top, and it's gonna show you a, uh, a nice little thing here where it shows you graphic temperature, GPU usage, uh, bus usage, memory usage, uh, it shows all that stuff there for you. If you, what this is pretty much is a monitoring software. So while you're gaming, it shows you all your stuff on the screen itself, on the top left hand corner. And I'll show you how that looks. But um, I like to have GPU temperature, I like to do core clock, I like to do memory clock uh, as well for the GPU. And I also do G uh, CPU usage, I do RAM usage and frame rate. So once you have all that done, hit apply. And then I also like to go to fan, which I already have this one applied as well. So I do a fan curve, okay? What a fan curve does is, see how it says fan speed on the left-hand side? So this is your fan speed on the left-hand side. At the bottom is your temperature. What I like to do is match up fan speed with temperature. So once it hits uh, 30 Celsius, it's going 30% fan speed. Once it hits 40 Celsius, it's going 40% fan speed. Once it hits 50, 50 fan speed, 60 Celsius, 60% fan speed, so on and so forth, all the way upwards to 90 or 100. So I like to set my curve like that. Uh, once you do all that, you hit OK. Um, on the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to see a little icon with like a little screen in it. It's called River Tuner. Uh, that's going to come up where you could actually change your color of what the actual river tuner software is going to look like on your overlay while you're playing uh i don't always have this open it just depends on what game i'm playing just to kind of see results and stuff like that i put mine to to, to yellow because it's more vibrant it's it's more noticeable but uh once you hold that have once you have all that set up we'll move into the actual software so the software itself msi afterburner there's there's a few things you want to know about it uh one thing is it's it's very stable. I mean, it's actually really, really good. There's different ways to stress test your, G your CPU, your GPUs. I, I like to use Fermark, uh, but there's other ways. I use Unigen Heaven as well to kind of get some results out of it. But let's do this. Let's first start off in the top. So we're going to touch the power limit, which power limit is linked up with your temp limit as well. You could actually unlink it as well if you wanted to, but I like to have it linked together. So when I increase this all the way up, all this is doing is I'm letting the software know. I'm letting the GPU know that. Whatever I set my core clock to, let's say it's two point, let's say it goes all up to 2.1 gigahertz, which I've achieved that already with this GPU. Uh, it gets that high. I'm letting it know that, listen, you could you could grab as much power as you need to maintain that 2.1 gigahertz on the core. So that's why I put the limiter all the way up and put the temperature all the way up. 88 Celsius for this GPU, it, it's it's not gonna hit that much anyways because it's a the GPU I'm using is the MSI Lightning uh, Z, the RTX 180 Ti from MSI. So it's never going to hit that anyways. But if it does, it's going to start declocking itself. So it's going to start reducing the performance of itself to maintain those temperatures. So you could put that all the way up. It's not going to affect it in any way. That's not a problem. Now, when it comes to the quarter clock, this is a little bit different. This is where you got to kind of tweak it, go trial and error, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you're first overclocking your, your GPU, what I'd recommend doing is starting in small increments. So I would say easily every GPU should be able to overclock plus 50. No problem, right? Uh, memory clock as well. I will start off around 100 as well. So let's uh, set that to 100. And then fan speed, we'll leave that alone because like I said, you could do the monitoring and all that stuff. Once I hit apply, which is a little check mark here, give it a second. So now it just increased my, 
you see my memory, which was at 7,000 even, now it's at 7,099. With this GPU that I have, let's say, I'm gonna show you the results that I got with this GPU. If I click profile one, hit apply. Now you're gonna see it's at 8,000. So now it's at 8, 000, pretty much 8,000 on the memory uh, memory clock. I did plus 1,000, plus 130 on the core. And to give you an idea, let's go ahead and open up Unigen Heaven to kind of give you, actually, you know what? Let's run a benchmark. Let's do, uh, where is, wasn't there you play open? Oh yeah. Let's go here. Actually, let's do the division. Let's try a benchmark for the division because I know a lot of you guys actually have this, have this game. So let's go run a benchmark real quick. Oh, it's installing the DX, whatever, DirectX. That sucks. Well, why that launches again. There it goes. Very good. Very good. Warning, please read before playing. All right, all right, I will, I will, I will. All right, so there you go. So now it's showing the top left-hand corner. It's showing the GPU temperature, the memory clock, core clock, uh, the CPU usage, the, the amount of RAM it's using, and then the actual FPS as well uh, overall. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to run at 1080p because I know a lot of you guys don't have a 1440p display. So we're actually going to do uh, 1080p so that way you guys can actually try it out yourself at home. So we're going to go to graphics. We're going to have everything at ultra. Uh, we're going to have... Resync off. Frame rate limiter, no. We're gonna do high. Ultra, resolution scale all the way up. Ultra. Yep, yep. High. High, on, on. Parallax mapping, yes. High, high, that's on, that's on. What is this? Adjust the geometric complexity of the frame rate. The higher the settings, the more detail the object is. Yep, all the way up. Extra natural lighting, turn on various lighting enhancements, only recommended if you play in a dimly lit room. No, we'll have that off. Lens flare on, on. That's on high. Yep, that's all the way up. Yes, yes, and yes. All right, so everything is all the way up. Uh, changes will be applied next time you launch the game. All right, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and relaunch the game. Let's go ahead and close it out and relaunch it. Make sure we get everything in there applied properly. Guys, this is not supposed to be a professional video, so you know what? Relax. I know some of you are like, oh, wait, why is why is Power not, like, editing all this out? Why hasn't he done this? Why hasn't he done that? Look, we're just doing all natural, all right? We're just, as it goes. You know what I mean? If there's, if there's hiccups and stuff like that, yo, know, I'm human. We make mistakes. We do certain things. It's whatever, man. All right, let's jump in here. Yes, Ubisoft. By the way, guys, remember how I always said with RAM, 16 gigs of RAM is more than enough? To give you an idea, while running everything else in this computer, while running the division, all that jazz, it's only using 9.7 gigs of, of RAM. Uh, in this PC, we have 32, gig, 32 gigs, but if you had 16, be more than enough. This is That's for the whole machine. So the whole machine is using it right now. Let's round it up, 10 gigs of RAM, right? All right, so let's go to settings. Uh, let's go to benchmark. And let's go ahead and run the benchmark. Let's see what we should score. Let's see what we score. And then you can compare it against my results if you wanted to. Now, keep in mind, this is overclocked. So this is with the core clock on the RTX 2080 Ti uh, Lightning Z edition. So this, this, this GPU is able to overclock pretty high because it has three 8-pin connectors. It's designed for overclocking. Um, so we are upwards of 2.1 gigahertz on the core. So as you can see in the top left-hand corner, it's showing, uh, let's go do this actually. There you go, you guys can see it better. So right now, we're at 163 FPS. This is at max settings, guys. This is everything completely maxed out. So while in game in the benchmark, it's using 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's using 46% of the i9. And of course, it's gonna be using almost 100% of your GPU. That's normal, that is perfectly fine. But we're seeing some nice results. So this is at 1080p, guys. And then we'll uh, we'll increase it to 1440p here shortly, since the 2080 Ti is definitely overkill for a uh, for 1920 by 1080. Let's be honest, completely overkill. There we go. We just got we just got a lag spike there. 
think my bottleneck right now is my uh, my SSDs in this build. I gotta get it. I gotta get better. I gotta get some NVMe M.2s. One thirty-six. Let's see what we get here. The results are as follows. Should stop right here. All right. So average FPS was one hundred and fifty-two. GPU usage was 97% and CPU usage was 43, so that's good. GPU usage is fine. Uh, we did get a lag spike on zone 3 and zone 1 where it dropped pretty low, as you can see right there. Now, what that might have been on my end is I used the Corsair IC ICU series uh, fans, and that software sometimes makes my FPS drop like that. So, let's go back, and let's go ahead and change it now to... 1440p uh, to see the re actually you know what no let's do this let me change the GPU core clocks and everything back to default so the good thing about overclocking to a GPU is you could actually literally just put everything back to default automatically so now we're gonna go back into the benchmark so that was our last results 152 was the FPS 13,500 so let's go ahead and try it again without the GPU being overclocked so now you see our memory is now down to 7,000 instead of 8,000, which is the second one there. So let's go ahead and see what we average out now. So yeah, instead of 19, so instead of 2.1 gigahertz, now we're at 1950 on the core at stock and memory is at 7,000. So we literally only jumped up about another 150 megahertz on the core clock and then a thousand megahertz on the memory so let's see what kind of results we get now we're actually getting probably more stable results just because with benchmarks you got to run them multiple times because sometimes you get anomalies like i did with the last test where it kind of dropped it dipped so let's take a look at this so keep in mind guys this is this is what the gpu has stock so well, well Stock what this card comes at, which is already factory overclocked like crazy to begin with. So I can see here we're in the 120s here before we're at the 130s on this part without the overclock. So we're definitely seeing some FPS lower. We're at 120, 119, 112, 115. Yeah, we weren't this low before. Now, and keep in mind, guys, each game varies. It's different. So some games you might get, you might see a higher jump in with an overclock. Some games jump up 50, 60 FPS with overclock. Some don't jump up that much. Uh, we definitely average lower, though. Let's see here. So we went down to 141. So keep in mind, guys, this is with a pretty decent overclock, okay? So going from 2.1 gigahertz on the core down to 1950, and the memory clock going from... 8,000 megahertz down to 7,000, which is the factory, which is what this card comes at factory settings. Um, we went down about 11 FPS. Okay. So uh, 10 FPS on average, that's, that's a pretty big jump, but personally it's not worth it for me to keep that overclock 24 seven. Honestly, it's not. So, and GPU got up to 74 Celsius with this, with this benchmark. So there's actually other software that I've actually used uh, to do these results and benchmarks and I've actually haven't seen it spike up that much either in temperature So some games will even use up more uh, On your actual GPU. So even though it says 98% GPU usage It's still not going to go up as high as far as temperatures go But that's pretty much it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video If you guys have any questions or concerns uh, join the discord We always have a lot of people in there a lot of admins helping out as well But um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned a little bit when it comes to overclocking I always tell people it's really not worth it in the long run because you're deteriorating your hardware, you're pushing more juice to it, you're you're pushing the the boundaries of where it's not supposed to be at. Um, even though it's, I mean, it's fine if it takes it, but again, over the time, over the course of the years, if you leave it like that, it, it does uh, start underperforming and it starts deteriorating the card itself. So uh, just just be aware of that. It's something you got to be careful with. So. Take it with uh, one of those things where if you really want to, if you really want that FPS, save up money and get the right get 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 the power behind it. 
So if you want to average a certain amount of FPS in the game, just save up a little bit and get you know get the GPU you want to get, get the CPU you want to get. Uh, don't 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 go with the lower end card and then overclock it because it's not gonna it's not gonna work as good. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Uh, definitely to be doing more videos like this to kind of give you guys a little bit more knowledge on a few things. And uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you guys did, make sure to like it. And make sure to subscribe. A lot more content to come. Our Patreon is extremely active. It's growing more and more. Uh, also, make sure to follow us on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.